it's actually, I find it quite, it's, I find it really enjoyable and very, you know, releasing. And I, I love to do it. It's fun. I have a good time playing that nun. Let me tell you, it is a fun role. Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. My name is Talal and you are listening to the Popcorn and Soda Podcast, the show where we discuss all things movies, pop culture, and so much more. I want to thank each and every one of you for making me a small part of your day. On today's show, we're joined by a very special guest. She is one of the finest creative artists in the industry today. You know her as The Nun, Valak in the billion dollar Conjuring film universe. Her amazing performance in this role through multiple films has truly made her one of the greatest horror icons of all time. On the show today, the very talented Bonnie Aarons. How are you, Bonnie? Wow, thank you. What an introduction. <laughs> wow, <laughs> hey, thank you. My, my pleasure. That's the, the least I can do. And thank you so much for coming to hang out on the show today. Thank you for having me. Have you been over the last year, Bonnie? We're living in such a crazy world right now. What did the last 18 months look like for you? Well, it was pretty, at the beginning, it was pretty crazy. You know, I, I live alone. I am alone. And um, I went through quite a bit of things. And, uh, but I relaxed into it. I, you know, just surrendered into the situation. And I do live like a block and a half from the ocean. So that helped a lot. All right. These online courses, which I don't know if I got something from them. They were great. <laughs> and I did a lot of meditating. Ooh, which was all right. Fantastic. Yeah, I said, like I said, you know, hey, we're all supposed to be separated and we're all supposed to be isolated. Maybe it's time to go inside. A long time. <laughs> and not only inside, but within yourself. Yeah, definitely. And, and I totally appreciate where you're coming from with that is... Hopefully, as things start to clear up a little and restrictions hopefully start to get loose, but I don't know, with everything kind of going on, we might have to go back to some of those restrictions. I, I hope people can maybe take some positives away from all this, that the most important thing is your mental health being the internal things rather than the external. Yes, absolutely. Well, I have autism and it was quite difficult for me at first because everything was like, <gasps> whoa, this is never going to end. And it was, it, and then it, it was, it was like, wait a minute. It was, it was sort of like, I'm in a vortex and it's vibrating. And, you know, but then I could look out or walk to the beach. I was like, wait, I'm on a beacon now. <laughs> I don't have to worry about anything, but wait a minute. Am I ever going to work again? Am I ever going to this, this, this? I'm, gonna, I'm never going to see anybody. Oh my God, I'm all alone. It, it uh. was just, um, it was intense, but yeah, I think that I think that would help the universe, right? I mean, it got it definitely like, did. It helped the universe, the pollution, and and the and the sea and the sea creatures, and you know, I think it helped a lot. Yeah, and I think it just also put a lot of things into perspective in terms of how a lot of us were living our daily lives. Instead, that, like most people would get up and before their job starts at nine, they'd be up at six, run to get a coffee, run to the train station, wait in the train for an hour, get to work at nine, and you've already been up for four or five hours kind of shows you how counterproductive a lot of society really is with some of the older methods that we were doing. Right. Well, you know, you do the same thing, just do it a different way. Inter you know, internally, do it a different way. Do it more centered. So it, it's not as frantic. It's mm -hmm. not as crazy. It's not so much, uh, you know, monkey mind chatter. You know, but I, I, but I think it's enough already. It's ruined a lot of people's businesses and lives. And yeah. I mean, it's just so sad what it's done. Yeah, here's hoping to a, a better second half of 2021. And hopefully by 2022, we can start to return to a normal or whatever this new normal really may be. Um, as you mentioned, it has been, it's been a difficult time for a lot of people. How are you holding up today as we're talking right now? Are things, are you feeling better throughout the whole process now? Yes, yes. I became uh, very adept at adapting. My, I increased my adaptability. 
Well, that's good. And I'm so happy to hear that, Bonnie. And for everyone else listening uh, who may be struggling or who is trying to get better throughout all this, there's a lot of help out there. And just we all do our part to get the world back to normal. So wear your mask, get vaccinated if you can, and let's get back to the way things were, ideally, right? Yes. There we go. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Amen. Bonnie, I am so fascinated by your story. Where does this all begin oh. for you? And what were some of your early influences that made you want to be in the creative arts? Well, my parents were always involved in, uh, in, in the arts and in music and in theater. And I you know, grew up watching all kinds of you know, different movies, horror and sci-fi and, and drama. And I was exposed to all of that. And because of my disabilities, my my mother made sure that I was involved in things like the theater to help me open up and to speak and and to uh, communicate. So that's where it all basically began. And um, here we are now. From there, I yeah here here I here I am now. After all, it took me it's like a lifetime, but you know um it, it's 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 you just keep going for your dream you just keep you know yeah hey i'm living proof that if you really want to do something you find a way with all odds against me all odds against me i um never gave up i don't i still don't i'm still going after it i'm still going after what i what i want to do and i love what i do and i enjoy it and i'm i'm so happy to hear someone like you enjoy watching me do what i do Oh, uh, well, Bonnie, honestly, like, I, I love what you just said there. It's if you have a dream and if you have a goal in, in this world we live in today, it, it's very easy to get sidetracked. And it's very easy to because there's a lot of rejection in the world. And if you really want something, you, you have to keep going after it. And as you mentioned, you're living proof that no matter what obstacles are in your way, if this is something you really want and if you put in the time and dedication day in, day out, you can get there. You have to be your biggest fan in many ways, right? That's right. Well, you find, you know, it's very interesting. You find a way and the same way is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's not for everyone. There's a, the million right now in this day and age, we have, you know, the internet and everyone can make a little movie on their phone or, or yeah. just start their own YouTube page and, and do their own little, you know, thing and show off their skills. And there's, it's not the same in everyone. If you really though want to do something and people say, oh, well, how do I do it? Well, you know what? No one needs to tell you how to do it. You'll find a way. Ooh, wise words of wisdom from Bonnie Aarons herself, everyone. That should be like a fortune cookie there. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, and you know what, Bonnie, I think this conversation we're having right now, it's living proof that there's two creative artists in, in yourself uh, as an actress and myself to be a host, a media figure. Here we are on a platform like Zoom and by the power of the internet, we're making this happen. And back 20, Wait, 30 years ago. Home. Wait. And there we go. And we're at home. Do that. You couldn't. And, yeah, and we didn't even have to travel anywhere. I didn't have to drive anywhere to go do it or fly anywhere. I'm right here. Right here. And just the and reach right that there. we can have. And I'm right here. And that's just the beauty of this and the power of technology and the things we have at our disposal. As you mentioned, uh, if you have one of these smartphones, you're a movie director, you're a content creator, you can post on TikTok, YouTube, well, Instagram, remember, uh, whatever. You know, um, David Sambor. I think, yeah, he had lights out in Shazam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, he did like that. That was him and his wife making a little film short of, you know, a few minutes film on their iPhone, on their telephone, in their own home with nothing. And James Wan made a little short, you know, with Saw. And it goes on and on and on and on, you know, um, uh, even to the, you know, so many directors that are huge right now and storytellers that are gigantic that, you know, just started with just doing it on their phone and putting it on the internet. Yeah. And you never know who's going to see it. You don't. And, and that's the beauty of technology, modern technology. Like, sure, there are some downfalls to it, but the positives of it are so just like, like I mentioned, if you have a smartphone and if you have a vision and a dream and a goal, use the technology available to you to make it happen because no one else is going to do it for you. This is true. Definitely. And that's where you find there are you find a way.
And if you see me, I used to like when I in I arrived here in Hollywood in what is it, 19. I came from New York. I was living in New York for 10 years. And then I said, okay, let me go to go in, in Hollywood. And I moved here. Um, what was it? Nine, 19? Wait, it was eight. I think it was. What the heck year? Well, I've been here for 30 some odd years. So. So, so in like the early 90s, maybe 90. if it's 30 years, 91, 92? Yeah, early 90s, over 30 years. Yeah, I'm from New York. And I was, I moved, you know, I went to New York after high school and I lived there for, you know, 10, 11 years. I moved here and I, you know, I had a friend, he passed away, J.T. Walsh, who I was going to give it up. And he said, no, I mean, you know, he became, I don't know if you're familiar with this, with this um, actor. He passed away a while back and he said, don't. You know, just come out here, come out here where things are broader. You know? And so I, you know, I did and I gave it a go and didn't give up. That's the whole thing. You don't give up because, you know, I say that, you know, people, you never really, um, you know, fail at something. You just stop doing that yep. and go on to something else. That's true. That's true. And you, you, as you mentioned, like back to the central thread of our conversation so far, you're living proof of that. And you just got to keep grinding and it will oh, yeah. eventually open doors for you. And Bonnie, as I mentioned at the very top, you've cemented your legacy in the horror genre as one of the all time great characters. And when we think of horror characters, like the iconic ones, right? We think of like Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, Leatherface. But in the 21st century, we don't really have that. But. There's two real exceptions to that, and one is The Nun, and the second one is Annabelle. Those are the two that really pop into your mind, and that's largely due to your work and the great oh. work of the amazing Conjuring universe. So let's deep dive into that. Your introduction as The Nun was in that second Conjuring movie, which is quite possibly the scene stealing, like the entire scene was just so amazing, especially in a movie that was already great. People came away with The Nun itself as the main thing that people were really talking about. So what was your introduction to this universe? And what was the original pitch of the character from director James Wan? Well, I went on an audition. The movie was already in post and they didn't like the, the monster that they had there mm -hmm. on, on it. So they held an audition and I just went on the audition. I didn't even know, I knew it was for, they said it was for an untitled James Wan. I didn't know it was for The Conjuring 2. And the audition was to just go in there and scare the crap out of everybody. And so I did. <laughs> and I, I had no idea it was really for the Conjuring 2. And I went to the callback and that's when I finally realized it was for the Conjuring 2. And I, I'm a huge fan of James Bonnet. I'll tell you what I did, it's really... <laughs> so I was there and the callback was me and two men. And we had to get dressed up. You know, they said, oh, wear something. I didn't even know what it was. They said, just wear something dark. You know, wear something long, wear something dark. And you're gonna sit in a makeup chair and then you're gonna work with the director. I'm like, okay, you know? So I was very familiar, I'm very familiar with James Wan. I, you know, I know he likes to work with Moon. I also know the most important thing is he's a huge fan of David Lynch and a huge fan of Mulholland Drive. So when I was on that callback, I had on my phone, uh -huh. <laughs> Right there, right there, a picture of David Lynch and I Damn. on the me as the bum in Mulholland Drive. And when he walked in that makeup room, I shoved him. Look, hi James Wan. Look, I'm the bum from Mulholland Drive. And he just stood there like this. You're hired. <laughs> Completely blank. You know, yeah, I knew it. And let me tell you, these two other actors, it's like, you know what? I can give a shit. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna do whatever I can. But after at all said and done. Everybody, even the producer said, as soon as they saw me, you know, in the first, you know, in the first call with all the people, they said, as soon as they saw me, they said, that's it. That's her. That's, that's the nut. They said it was hands down. There wasn't anybody. They just said that was it. They knew it from the first one. Absolutely. And it's just yeah. as someone who absolutely loves horror movies, I, I can't imagine anyone else in this role, but you, Bonnie. And so the. Conjuring comes oh, out. Uh, no, it's a fact. Some people are born to play certain roles. And I feel like your body language, your facial expressions, your input in this role just makes it stand out. And one thing I love about this entire Conjuring universe is that it's got all these great 
surrounding characters like Annabelle, it's got the nun, and it's got the two main leads, but everyone gets a moment to shine. And you took your opportunity in that second Conjuring oh. movie and you made it shine and knocked it out of the park. Now, oh yeah, absolutely. Anytime I'm on screen, no, I gotta give it my all <laughs> and give it everything. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let this chance pass me by. Oh, no yeah. way. Yeah, you know, I only worked on the film for two days. I was a day player. <laughs> I worked on the Conjuring two for two days. I made every moment count. Two days, and in two days, you ended up being part of the highest grossing film in the entire Conjuring universe with The Nun itself. So let's transition into your solo outing. $300 million plus. It just shows you how much people love you and the character itself. It's got such a great setting and the story ties in with the universe itself so well. So as a performer, what is your process to getting into this physically demanding character that relies so much on body language and facial expression? Well, there's a lot of methods, you know, I could take and do and, you know, I do, you know, whatever method gets me there, you know, I think <laughs> if she's got to be really, really angry, you know, I can just go with the whole method acting thing. Let me think, let me think of some things that really tick me off. Or I can walk around set and look for things that tick me off or people that tick me off. And then, ah, nah, you don't tick me off. Okay, I think of something happens that tick me off. Oh yeah, that really ticks me off. Now let it out from the bottom of your soul and just let it out. Just do it. You can't, you have to really not care about how you look and um, how it's actually coming across. Just actually be it and do it. Right. You know, if you're thinking about too much, you know, it's a good thing. I don't have to be one of the pretty people, right? Oh, no, stop it, Bonnie. No, no. Come <laughs> on, please. It's a good thing I don't have to be one of the pretty people. I don't have to worry about all no. that. That must be rough. So it's um, it's it's actually I find it quite it's I find it really enjoyable and very you know releasing, and I, I love to do it. It's fun. I have a good time playing that nun. Let me tell you, it is a fun role. Well, you can tell by your performance that you're fully oh. engraved into it and you you really put all of yourself into it. So let's talk about the physicality of this role. Just even generally the way the character looks, how long is the entire makeup process for getting all of that sorted? Oh, it's not that long because it's my face and it's the it's this artist, it's this uh, the makeup artist, Eleanor Sabatikoya, who's incredible. She actually paints the, the Annabelle doll. Um, she she contours and draws on my face. That's it. So you know, is that it's very very simple. And the and the costume's quite comfortable. You know, I just had to get used to walking with all that material. And you know, the costumes. You know, it's light. And well, the first one was kind of heavy, but the one and then they redid the costume in the in the in the Conjuring. I mean, in the Nun, Conjuring Two costume was made of very heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. The nun costume was made of everybody had a different the nun, every every nun had a different thing to their costume. You know, all oh, the different okay. had a different if you look closely, they all had very different unique things on their costumes, on their habits. And um, so yeah, it's it was uh, you know, very, very it was it does it's it was very simple because they use my face, which is nice because I'm not having this big prosthetic on myself. Right, so, yeah. It, and I think that's just what captures your performance so well is that you have your facial expressions that you're so good with that it really just shows you that this is a human being, not behind a mask, not behind some, as you mentioned, prosthetics. We have an actual performance from an actress who is using her talents to scare the hell out of everyone. Oh, thank you. Oh, I welcome. am honored to do this. Uh, well, <laughs> I look forward to scaring the shit out of everybody for a long time to come. <laughs> Bam, there we go. You heard it here first, guys. Bonnie Aarons is going to make the rest of us just freak out for hopefully a, a, the Nun 2, 3, 4, 5, and maybe a spinoff here and there. Uh, but that we'll dive cool into that. <laughs> you know what would be a really cool spinoff thing is that they took all of the evil characters and made like, you know, a universe, all of, you know, the new line, you know, the, the you know, the Warner Brothers, all of the characters made a super villain thing. 
Who knows? I think you might be onto something here, Bonnie Aarons. I think uh, I've heard it somewhere before. It may not, you know. <laughs> that would that that would be cool. That would be cool, but I'm sure there is uh, lawyers and some red tape that would never let Sally that happen. But hey, we can dream, right? I think they could. Oh, you of think? course, they, all of them belong to them. Bonnie Aarons, make this happen. All the characters belong to them. Yeah, that, that's true. The all the good ones. What makes this film so terrifying and exceptional is the atmosphere and the mood that the team and director Corin Hardy create. Now, this is the question I ask everyone that has been in a horror movie. When you are on set and you're in this crazy atmosphere and especially your character in this movie that's the main antagonist, you're responsible for causing all the scares. But did Bonnie Aarons at any point genuinely feel a little creeped out on set? Well, the sets themselves were so beautiful. You know, the cinematography is stunning in the film and the sets are breathtaking. And, um, you know, did I feel creeped out? Yeah, I didn't feel creeped out. I mean, some of the castles were very creepy because a lot of horrible, horrible things happened in those places. Because we filmed in Romania, and we filmed on actual sites where a lot, you know, in these castles that they tortured people and they had the real stuff, they had the real torture devices there and they had, you know, horrible things happen back, you know, in, in, in you know, that time. And um, you could feel it actually in the walls of places, you know, you could feel it, you could feel the, you could feel it breathing there, you know, in the walls of these castles and places we film, there are actual, you know, skeletons and bones and things and just horrible atrocities happened there in these, some of these places. So that was, that was, that was creepy, you know, yeah, that was creepy. Yeah. For a movie that was shot so many dark scenes and scenes in the night, What's the biggest uh, difficulty of shooting those night scenes? Um, probably when I'm not wearing contact lenses and I can't see where I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> yep, been there, done that. <laughs> so that's prob probably it. Yeah. Not stepping on anything, you know. But it was pretty, it was very, very safe. Very, very safe. And, you know, you could, you, I would go around the terrain beforehand so I knew where everything was and where I'm going and you know so and then I was wearing contact lenses so it was uh, oh, ho hooray for contact lenses right <laughs> uh, yeah hooray for contact yeah. brilliant science yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> but it wasn't <laughs> now, incredible one, yeah now, now one thing I'm really fascinated about as someone who just grew up watching horror and someone who just loves the genre as someone who's part of the movie and as someone as the main antagonist of the movie, when you're on set creating these spooky scenes, these jump scares, do you know if they're working or do you just have to trust the process and trust your director that oh. they are going to work in, this, in the scope of the movie? Absolutely. I got to put all the trust in them. I just, yes, all the trust in them. They know what they're doing. They write this. They, you know, the writer was there, Gary Doberman on the set of The Nun. Um, there was a whole you know, team there and um, they, they're experts at it and they, you know, they know what they're doing. <laughs> they know, they know how to make a film. They know how to do, and James Wan is very, um, he's, 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 he, he does the, um, the long, slow, drawn, out intense, ah, you know, <laughs> like yeah. better than anybody. It's amazing, you know. Oh, it, it's, oh, it's, it's so true, so true, and especially just that atmosphere that these movies create, whether it's The Conjuring or The Nun. Sometimes we get more scared of the things we don't see rather than what we do see, right? Right, that's correct. Scary and known. That is correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the movie comes out. It has this crazy opening weekend. What was your first reaction to the movie? 
Oh, my reaction, my reaction watching, I just, I was stunned on how beautiful it is. I mean, I knew it was beautiful because I was there filming it. But I mean, there's some beautiful enchanting film. I mean, the scenery, the way it looks, the direction, the art, everything. Yeah, and, and that's what I love about this movie is, although a horror movie, and, and the answer you just gave is such an, an actress's answer. You were so immersed into the environment and the beauty of it, whereas someone like me watching it, I, I did notice a lot of that because I love to go in-depth into some of these movies, but the average moviegoer didn't see any of that. They were just more so just scared out of their pants just watching this movie. And, and it's, it's really interesting how creative artists have that viewpoint and opinion on their work rather than a viewer well that cinematographer is unbelievable maxine alexander he is incredible i think the cinematography has a lot to do with it oh of course yeah. the, the, you oh. can have those beautiful spaces and these castles and romania but unless you capture the right light the right angles and just capturing the overall scope of the scene it doesn't do anything until you actually have someone behind the lens that can do all of that my direction for my head movements and everything else and how the lighting was catching my thing was exact, was very, 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 very precise. Very had to go, do, 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 had to move, had to look, had to turn my head. Very precise. Mm. All right. So are we going to see The Nun 2? And if we do, what would you like to see in the sequel? I sure hope we see it. I sure would love to do it. I love playing that character. Um, ooh, you know what I would really find fantastic? If Valak was terrorizing a Catholic high school. Ooh. Wouldn't that be you fun? heard it here first. Wouldn't that be fun? And I'd also like to see them go into her, you know, more depth of, you know, where this demon, you know, comes from and how very old the demon is and, and which part of the bowels of hell it's from. That's true. There's so much amazing backstory to this character. And again, they've made three Annabelle movies. Uh, I'm sure they can make an entire trilogy based on this character. One thing that is so fascinating that you mentioned is the storyline and more so the backstory of this. What would you like to see? as a modern day adaptation of the nun in the 21st century with little tidbits of the past or another story set in the past that would uh, kind of go off from the first nun? You know, that's very interesting. Well, I think the cat, I, I, you know, I think both would be great. And I love the relationship, it, you know, the, 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 the nun, you know, that has with Lorraine Warren. I think that's yeah. phenomenal. You know, because she just how he came up, James Long came up with the nun is because Lorraine Warren had told him that she there she felt and had seen like this hooded creature following her and haunting her. It was always this hooded creature. And he said, ha ha, let's do the nun. The man's a genius. Let's make a nun because that goes, you know, they're hooded and it goes into, you know, her belief, the religious belief, you know, what what challenges, you know, the good and the evil. So I think, you know, ooh, and I love that Vera Farmiga. <laughs> She's something, isn't she? <laughs> I could do some more scenes with her. And uh, I, oh, I adore her little sister, Thaisa Farmiga. Ooh, I love that one. She was fabulous. She's a great actress and just everything in Both this of franchise. Them are incredible. The leads in this entire franchise are just amazing. And it goes back to a lot of the James Wan oversight of everything where. These movies, like nowadays, let's be honest, like nine out of 10 horror movies are like straight garbage. You watch it once. You know what it is? On. I feel like I'm seeing the same thing over and over oh. again. Nothing, nothing, nothing really, really that new. Although I thought the movie I did that the uh, Jacob's wife was something extremely very different. Well, and hey, there, you, know you watch that. On the topic of Jacob's wife, let's transition into that. That's been your oh, yeah. Well, I love movie. you know, but I do. I mean, I'll tell you though, when I got when I on the contrary to when I heard I'm doing scenes with Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, I was beside myself. Oh. <laughs> I was like flexing. Oh my god, I can't believe it because <laughs> I love them both so much. But yes, the Jacob's wife, uh, 
you know, I became friends with Barbara Crampton and now we became close friends. And when I had first met her, she had worked on Jacob, you know, working at getting the movie made for many years. And she said, the moment she saw me, she met me, she said, I knew you were going, you know, to be the master. And that, that, I, that movie something different. Isn't that something different? Now, is it difficult for someone who's played this iconic role as the nun to then transition oh, wait. over? Every time to someone her? says that to me, iconic, it, it it blows my mind every time. It's hum- every hey. single time. It's humbling. Bonnie Aarons, I speak facts here on the show, so oh, thank you. that it's facts <laughs> and it's true. So and humble. again, as I mentioned, Annabelle and the Nun. I, I can't really name you any other twenty first century horror icons. Maybe the girl from the Ring. That came out in the early two thousand Samara. Good. Yeah, that was a good movie. But besides that, it's just iconography and this imagery of these characters. They're, they're just so amazing. And from transitioning from the nun now playing this character of the master, is it difficult to get into a different headspace of that character? Or no. as an actress, you just kind of brush it off, move on to the next one. Oh, I, I for one thing, I love vampires. And um, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love vampires. And to play this vampire and make it my own and to be able to um, bring it, I wanted to bring it a new flavor of a vampire. And it just, it was just so, it was very fulfilling. The role, it was, it was very fulfilling. And I love the movie, it has a huge message that movie all over it, there are huge messages. And it's funny, it's a horror comedy and it gives a lot of messages everywhere through it. It's something that you can watch over and over again and get something else out of it. Yeah, it looks like a very different movie than your standard Hollywood cookie cutter horror movie. Okay. And, and, and I think that's what's so fascinating about that movie specifically is it takes the genre of horror and it adds elements of either comedy it adds elements of everyday life that an everyday person does feel in this space so i think it's fascinating how you guys were able to create this experience with jacob's wife that's in many ways very contrast and very different to the nun oh it's completely different absolutely 100 percent, completely different well, then Jacob's wife, it takes on like these, these true, you know, the, of, a, of a middle-aged woman and, and she's always been put down by her husband and stepped over and walked over and talked over and, and, and pushed over and like, eh, you're nothing and second-class citizen. And what does it take for her to burst out uh, to get bitten by a vampire? I mean, it takes that much for her to live a new life, but it's so, the film is so enriching. Because her enlightenment from the powers, you know, spill on over to everyone around her, you know, to her husband and, and how it changes him and his religious beliefs and what are they going to do in, in the ending? I don't want to spoil people haven't seen them. Not that many people have seen the movie, but I mean, it's got a great ending, doesn't it? That ending is phenomenal. Well, hey, as you mentioned, for everyone listening in, Jacob's wife's now on Blu-ray. Uh, and I believe it is streaming now as well. Um, so anyone listening, go check it out. If you want a different experience than your big blockbusters, here's a great movie that is independently made that really shows that there's a lot of great content creators out there that can take this genre and spin it in its own way and create something new rather than the old. That's right. Now, I, I know you just mentioned you love uh, vampires and all of that. What's your favorite vampire slash Dracula movie? I think it's got to be Nostratu the Vampire, Warner Hearth Garden. I just, I think the, the whole music's even creepy. The soundtrack's creepy. Everything's creepy in it. Everything. And I, I, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And it's sad. Mm. It's sad. And I, and I think that's what I love about certain horror movies and so, like the great horror movies. You remember them for more than just the scares and you remember them for more than just the imagery. It's There's a lot of depth in these characters and there's a lot of hidden messages and it reflects society on a scope in many ways. And and as you mentioned, that movie's great. And there's so many other great Dracula movies, uh, Christopher Lee and it's oh, overall, incredible. it's just 
it's it's a great role. Bella Lugosi. Oh. <laughs> so Bonnie Aarons, what's your dream role if you haven't already played it? Well, I haven't. I would love to do be a super villain in a superhero movie. Mm-hmm. You know, like a Loki or something. Wow. That All would right. be really dream. You know, yeah. like I did the Princess Diaries and it was sort of happening there with the Baroness von Trocken and the Princess Diaries, you know, a super villain and, um, you know, something, you know, Cruella, Bill. I've always thought of myself as a, as a, as a Disney evil character <laughs> and something, you know, like that or DC evil in one of their superhero movies, a super yeah. villain. Also something very dramatic, a dramatic role. Would be, yeah would be great actually i have a film coming out um uh, called i live alone okay and i'm playing it's sort of dramatic but mm, starts out to, but mm, it's a very different it's a very unexpected very very unexpected right now we're living in this world in hollywood where it's all about these franchises and these sequels being developed before the first one even comes out and you're part of that with the conjuring universe and you brought up superhero movies so what's a superhero movie that you like well that's a hard one to say i i love them all right if you got if you got more than one let's yeah yeah i love i love (laughs) i'm not you know i i love them all (laughs) they're all really terrific they're very exciting I love Aquaman as now, well. Is it Aquaman or is it Jason Momoa that you and millions of other people just fall in love with? <laughs> well, I think it's both. I mean, who else could play Aquaman but but the Momoa? And I think the whole thing is just, I mean, the world that they created underwater is just, you know, magical. It's another one of James Wan's amazing yeah. films. And who knows? Maybe we'll see Bonnie Aarons pop up in an Aquaman. Yeah, Medusa in there. Yeah, there. I could be a Medusa in there or something, right? Hey, of course. Uh, we'll throw that hey, out in the I, universe, no, and whoever's no listening, hope. let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah, you can only hope, right? You can only hope. But hey, we'd love to see that. Hey, how about Bonnie Aarons in a rom-com? Would you be interested in doing that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Something completely yeah, different. So that, uh, let's see the- that, would, that, would be, that would be great. I sort of was, but it was a comedy, a shallow Hal, but it was a comedy. It was a rom com, mm. basically, but shallow Hal was a comedy. I don't know if you've seen that. I've, I've seen that. That's the one with Jack Black, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. You mentioned dramatic roles. You mentioned dramatic roles in another movie you were in, uh, Silver Linings Playbook. You work opposite aside some great actors in that one as well. So your range is just it just overall like you can kind of do it all. What was amazing was that fighter movie, the Christian Bale. Oh, when I'm playing a David O. Russell, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was that was like, you know, whoa, working next to Christian Bale playing a crackhead. That was <laughs> crazy. That was well, intense. there's only was I feel like Christian Bale is one of those guys that's in a league of his own with some of his amazing roles, American Psycho, The Fighter, Batman. Like he's one of those actors that just completely immerses himself in a role. Yeah, he does. He does. He now, Bonnie Aarons, one thing I like to start to wrap up with my guests is I always ask them this: What are three of the most influential movies in your life that you watched that you haven't been part of things that have inspired you oh my god that's a hard question things that have inspired me that's a hard question if you've got more Um, than three it's all good we'll take it but uh what what's something that really makes you feel alive you know, we all saw, you know, I saw, you know, little kid watching The Wizard of Oz, you know, being totally, you know, enwrapped in that, in any vampire movie, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, superhero movies and dramas. Yeah. I, it's hard to say, to say, okay, that movie, 
you know, okay, because then it changes another day. Okay, it's that movie. What movie would it be today? You know, I do love watching Jim Carrey. Oh. And his performances. Um, you know, um, I just, you know, there's there's just so many to say. Yeah, and, and, and as you mentioned, Jim Carrey is one of those all-time greats as well, alongside Christian Bale, is just, his filmography is just so diverse and he's one of those guys that is still killing it that just shows you how amazing of a talent he is yeah that it is it's amazing you know like some of his mm-hmm. you know his movies the way he just he just lets it and he just does whatever he's doing and you know i mean he's special it's, it's that's such a, a hard what's the most because every day it would change it could change you know I guess, uh, that, that's, you know, fair. that's fair. That's fair. I would say all probably right. a lot of the Walt Disney movies, a lot of the, the animation when I was a kid, all those Walt Disney movies, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, you know, all the things from when I was a you know a little kid. You know, probably those things. Oh, you know, Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek. The original, of course. <laughs> yeah. William I Shatner, Sci-Fi Leonard well. Nimoy, yeah. 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 Uh, would be cool. I'd love to play a Vulcan. A Vulcan. Bonnie Earns, you walked into this one. So I have to ask you now, Star Trek or Star Wars? Oh, why did you ask me that? Oh, You walked into God. it, Bonnie Earns. Come on. Second I don't said Star know. Trek, I, I have to ask. Both of them. I love Star Wars. Oh, my God. I'd make a great evil in Star, in Star Wars. Oh, and I... <laughs> A Romulan also in Star Trek. A Vulcan or a Romulan. I don't know anything. Oh, that's too hard. I can say both. <laughs> I love them both. All right. Well, we'll take both since you've been so we'll gracious with your take, time today. Yeah, we'll take both. We'll take both. All right. We'll take both. We'll take it all. Why a limit? No limits here. <laughs> no limits. Go after it. Everyone listening, follow your dreams. Don't limit yourself. If you want to be someone in star trek go for it if you want to be a stormtrooper in star wars go for it you can do it all you know how many times you know how many times i wrote letters to the producers and to the casting directors of star trek i would send them on a weekly basis i would write wow. a letter i would go to the office and drop off and drop off my headshots never got called in for nothing never never but i would do that all the time but one thing i'll say about that though bonnie is you doing all of that, it just shows you that the drive and the willingness to go that far, because some people won't even go that route. They, they, wouldn't, they feel too insecure. They feel too not confident maybe in themselves to actually go after what you really want. And if anything, if anyone can take out anything from our conversation today is if you want something, you got to go after it. You're going to get rejected nine times out of 10 yeah. more so than you're going to get accepted. But that one yes could really just turn everything around and you need to believe in yourself. And, and I love that, Bonnie. I'm, I, I'm just like that where throw yourself out there. All right. If you're not going to do it, it's no one else is going to do it for you. So that's I, right. I think you that's just amazing. Well, you know, there's one thing that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, you know, while I was living, I, this one very well-known therapist um, uh, said to me, what are, you know, what are you afraid of? What are you this? So what, what is going to be if you weren't? How would you feel if you weren't afraid or if you didn't have to worry about that? How would you feel? Oh, I feel terrific. It would be, you know, very releasing. It'd be like, you know, I'm light as a feather. It'd be wonderful. I, 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 would, I would feel like Atlas Shrugged. Well, why don't you just feel that way and then go try and go and then go about your life? Just, just feel that way. Even if you don't pretend you do for a little while. Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. Wise words of wisdom from Bonnie Aarons herself. As you wrap up, with the great Bonnie Aarons. It is now time for a segment I call The Final Act. Bonnie, I'm going to ask you 10 rapid-fire questions about your likes and your dislikes. And we just want the first thing that pops into your head. You up for the challenge? Well, okay, let's do it. We'll see what happens. You saw what happened between Star Trek and Star Wars, so... What do you prefer watching more? Movies or TV shows? Movies. Theater or watch at home? Theater. Favorite current TV show that you recently watched? 
um, oh, uh, 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 oh, it's on, uh, on HBO, uh, White Lotus. Okay. Summer or fall? Fall. Does pineapple belong on pizza? No. <laughs> Amen to that. Slashers or supernatural horror movies? What do you prefer watching more? Supernatural. Favorite horror movie? The Nun. <laughs> Favorite horror character not named The Nun? <laughs> <laughs> um, Dracula. Dracula. And lastly, describe the Conjuring universe in one word. Beautiful. Well, Bonnie, thank you so much for being a guest on the show today. And that was beautiful. I, I love that answer. Thank you for your contributions to the world of film and more importantly, the horror genre. As someone who absolutely loves the Conjuring films, you truly are the standout of this universe for me. Aww. And for that, I'm greatly thankful to you because I got to experience those movies with my brothers and my family. And the nun is just a character that I just adore. I wish you all the best. And I look forward to having you back on the show to discuss your next project. Oh, thank you so much. I am honored. Thank you so much. 